and this is 12 rigs of Christmas. Oh man, I think I see a shop over there or something. I gotta get myself a ride. I gotta get, get down into town. With that sled going down, I am way behind schedule on this pre-run here. So I've got the presents back. See if I can't find somebody to get a ride into town. I gotta get back into Carson City, Nevada. I gotta, got in a, we call it a hair appointment maybe at the, uh, at the Bunny Ranch a little bit later with a girl we know, Cristal. Gotta, I gotta make that appointment. It's super important, you know, you know, in the sake of Christmas and everything. So hopefully we can, I think I see a shop over here. So maybe we can get a ride with somebody here. This looks like the right place. Let's go see what we got in here. I know I can get a ride from somebody. <laughs> this is obviously the right place when you see a three-wheeler side by side. So let's see if we can't commandeer a ride, if you know what I mean. Ho, ho, ho. What's up, Santa? Is that you, Ryan? <laughs> you know it. Looks like I What's came to the right place. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I heard you moved out here into the desert. I did. Yeah, yes, not sir. a lot going on out here. I've been hiking for like 50 miles. I got stranded at Fort Ice, hitchhiked over Highway 80. Now I'm hiking into town. What are you doing all that for? I got an appointment down at the Bunny Ranch. Yeah, you do. You know, a little pre-Christmas workout, if you know what I mean. Yeah. 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 boy. So I had cool. no idea what you had going on here. Uh, and my eyes are seeing a lot of good things. So first off, 392, CJ, CJ, CJ. Yes, sir. So you know I'm kind of a CJ guy, right? So I've heard. Yeah. So I've heard. Well, uh, if you don't mind, you want to give us a tour of your shop here and show us the rigs? 100%. Tell me about this. That. This is the Big Red. The almighty Big Red. Otherwise known as an ATC. ATC. This is an ATC. I happened to drop my, uh, my presence there and I noticed that, oh, what the? Ah. I found it, it's kind of open, but it feels cold. Yeah, All right. it's yours. Mm -hmm. I knew you were coming. So I'm looking at this thing. I used to have one of these when I was a kid, but this is the model that actually has high and low range, like a transfer case. Don't forget reverse. Check this out. Look at this right here. This is the high and low, so it's basically got four low. We'll call it four low. Yeah. yeah. And reverse. So how do you switch it into reverse? Neutral. And then into Oh, the you just click right that into reverse. So it's high, low, or reverse. Yeah. That's it. So any man who owns Big Red Three Wheeler with the racks, this setup also owns the good stuff, right? Well, I mean. And sure. drinks Coors beer. You know it. So tell us about this. What is this? So this was a 1984 CJ8. It was bone stock when I got it from a good friend of ours. Um, a couple year build. So you know I got a soft spot in my heart for the scramblers, right? Uh, yes, I do. I actually came to your house when you lived uh, over there in California under uh, Emperor Newsom's regime. Yes, sir. And uh, you had this in, in your shop down there, but I it did. was all stock. It was. And you were talking about building it, so we kind of talked about the project and what to do. And yep. what was the first thing I said to start with? 100%. Yeah, <laughs> get rid of that. Get rid of the stock frame. So, yep. like you just said, this frame is from where? It's uh, Wide Open Designs. And did it come welded or was it a kit? It came welded. It came welded as a CJ7 frame currently, or well, at the time when I they bought it. They didn't this, have a scrambler frame. They didn't have a scrambler then. frame. So, uh -huh. I, I cut the back and added on for the scrambler length. So, started with the frame. Yep. And then the key is you wanted this OG scrambler half cab, right? If I couldn't build it with a half cab, I wasn't going to build it. And this build is not a rock crawler. It's not a daily driver. It's not a desert rig. It's everything, right? It's everything. That was the goal. So they say that can't be done. It's done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. So your, your goal was to go fast, go slow, drive it on the highway, register it, and have that old school CJ look, That's right? That's it. Take yeah. it to the sand dunes, all that stuff. And the original paint, the original decals, Yep. you know, still on the actual body part. Obviously you see all the new build stuff. Sure. Um, 
I remember, uh, I think you were telling me uh, the gear and axle shop actually actually built this axle for you, I believe, right? Yes. So yep. this is a 80 through 91 Kingpin Ford 60. Yep. And you went ahead and put reed C's and knuckles on it. Yep. Full hydraulic steering, fully trussed, and then because you want to be kind of buggy-ish and go fast, what kind of suspension link design did you do in the front here? So it's a four link in the front, triangulated four link. Um, just your standard, nothing special. The fast part of it is a shock package. So um, you have uh, ADS shocks on this thing, ADS right? ADS shocks. And triple bypasses in the front with two inch coilovers. Uh, five tubes in the front. Oh, five yep. tubes, oh man. Tubes hiding in the back. I missed, I missed yep. two whole tubes. You did. All right. Five tubes, air bumps, 2.0 coilovers yep. that helps fit the package better. That's right? it. Um, now, the suspension's tucked in there. It's sitting really low. The frame being up so high gives you a ton of up travel, and that leads us into what's going on with the grill. So at first glance, you don't notice that these frame horns are way up high, and it's sitting here low to the ground. So tell us what's going on right here. So what's going on is basically I just chopped the grill. It's the same width but it's i chopped i'm not sure how many i mean inches that out grill only looks like it's a 12 or 14 inches high right yep yeah you look at that grill right next to you and it's like two feet of, of grill bars yeah right? yeah so the hood's in the same place according to the cab and everything you just squeeze the grill down to get the frame a lot higher up that's it which at first glance you don't notice that um and it, it's really clean how you did it thank you so i noticed you have genrite highline fenders yeah same ones that i have on the on the shop scrambler um, you want to pop the hood and show I us do. what's sure. underneath the hood here? Original hood, just cut down, opened up for the shocks, opened up for the uh, air cleaner. What do you got, a big block with a you know, double pumper or what? So we're looking at a, uh, it's an LQ9. It's got the, the throttle body assembly on top of that intake. I, I wanted the old school look. I wanted to cut out so, the hood. So it's a Gen 3 LS LQ9, yep. but to have the air cleaner, and actually it's a great spot for the air cleaner because there's not so much going on in here. You got that old school carburetor look. I had to battle air intake temperatures when we built this rig, and I didn't want to have to do that with this rig. So you're pulling right out of outside the hood. Absolutely. Um, and this has the Holly uh, management system? Yeah, it does. So yep. what intake manifold is that? That's a great question. I don't remember. I think I built saw it a couple years ago. I think ago. I saw... Oh, it's made by Holly. Okay. So basically the throttle body's there. The multiplied port injectors are still on the rails, mm -hmm. run by the Holly system. Yep. Um, otherwise an LQ9, nothing crazy about it. Uh, you know, I threw some trick flow heads on it, threw a cam at it. Oh, so you went for it. So yeah. Yeah, I got you. Respectfully, maybe five, five and a quarter. And you know, you'll, there's like a lot of race car design going on here, but still, you know, rock crawler and all mixed in. So. Right. First thing I see is you put the orbital right on the firewall. Mm -hmm. um, so the steering column comes through right into the orbital for the full hydraulic steering. And then, you know, it, there's not a lot of space here, but I could see you've got the HydroBoost brakes down here yep. um, with the Wheelwood master cylinder. So that's tucked in the fender. What's this little thing right here? That's the engine oil. Cooler. Oh, that's the engine oil reservoir? The uh, cooler. There's a cooler right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's an electric fan down there. Mm -hmm. So it's an engine oil cooler, okay. And then it comes right out of this vent? Right. Oh, that's killer. So it vents the air out of the side It actually vent pulls fresh air in. Oh, it sucks it in? Yep, yep. Okay, yep. And then, uh, I mean, every spot is taken in here. Now, I'll walk around the other side because there's something that I definitely appreciate here. Uh, tell us what this is. So, in my opinion, that's the best off-road air compressor known to man. Um, it's the York. If your engine's running. If your engine's running, correct. <laughs> yep. So, so, th so these were old air conditioning pumps on many old vehicles, AMC, Ford, whatever. Um, and it actually has oil in the crankcase. It doesn't mix in with the, with the Freon. Correct. Um, and so you can easily turn them into an air compressor, right? Just like that. So mounted on the LS, right onto the Serpentine belt. And uh, I mean, you got instant air and the higher RPM you're at, the more air you're gonna push, That's right? That's it, that's it. So another weirdness, the weird thing going on with the grill and everything is you look here and you go, that can't be the radiator. That's correct. This is a transmission cooler. So, it, you know, no space, throw the transmission cooler right up front. And as you can see, the uh, water pump just makes a sharp turn there. 
and shoots to the back. Yep. And as we get back to the back, we'll see, but you move the radiator to the back, right? Yep. yep. Um, Odyssey ba batteries, obviously you got, uh, you know, shock towers or a brace across the top. Yep. Um, basically this is just a full rigid chassis with a sheet metal body, you know, That's sitting pretty on much top it. of it, right? Yep. Um, all right, well, let's uh, work our way back. We'll okay. close this up. One of my rules is always put the pins in. Find, found out the hard way, didn't you? Yo, lots of times. Anybody that's owned a CJ has Look at that. That's way. even OG damage, right? That's not from you? Nope. Uh, no, what? the rig was previously rolled. Oh, it was a rolled scrambler, huh? It was. Oh, man, that's, the, that's what they call the provenance when you go to sell it, the right? The provenance. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> um, first off, Baja Designs. I noticed you got it on the front bumper, Baja Designs lights up here. Yep. Awesome lights, right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, Problem. I can imagine how bright that is in the desert. Yep, very happy with them. Check out this Chevy emblem right there. So, one of the things you and I talked about, oh, how about that? OG uh, Coors Original Tall Boy just I was just picking up trash along the, the floor. Road. Yeah, I bet that's what it was, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, doing my part. When you first said you were gonna build this, your size, how tall are you? 6'3". Six, 6'3", three. Six, three, with a scrambler cab, I told you, can't be done. Correct. We're, you're not going to fit in here comfortably. Well, the answer that you had to that was how you built the dash, correct? Yes. Well, here, let's sit in this thing real quick and kind of, you can explain what's going on here. So I sat in this earlier. First off, you can get in with a beer in your hand. Not too tall, little half doors. So, you know, I'm 6'1", 285. Yeah. It's fitting pretty good in here, right? Not too bad. And the dash is up high and gives you all this room underneath for your knees and your feet and everything, right? It's the only way this would have worked. So you have the essential things. So you have the, the art car winter shifter. You got your rugged radio. Um, tell us about the console. So custom built console, obviously. This houses the, uh, this, the three speed hero case. Um, I mean, what you see is what you got. Do you got. ever forget what these shifters are? Cause no, because you can see it's very lightly labeled in Sharpie right there. Oh, That's you wrote it in Sharpie right yeah. there? Because I forget what my Atlas shifters are. I've been selling Atlases for 20 years. There's one too many of these. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah. So you fit in here well. So the cool thing is this notch right here. Look at that notch for his knee. So his body fits in there bitching. A comfortable steering wheel pops on and off. The cage is uh, inch and three quarter, 120 wall in it here. It is. So smaller tubes, easier to fit. Uh, fits inside the hard top. Yep. And uh, I, I'm comfortable in this thing. It's not I mean, too bad. You accomplished what I didn't think could happen. This well, and what makes it nice too is you know. Oh, having you the, even have the, the tilt. tilt. You have the tilt on the on the quick yeah, release it, steering. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then obviously GPS here. Yep. Um, that controls the music. That controls you know like lighted whips and anything Bluetooth. Oh, all the cool stuff. All huh? the cool stuff. All you the got party Bluetooth stuff. drive lines on this thing. This or is a SEMA rig. Oh, okay. <laughs> got the, you got an actual front drive line. Yeah, yeah. See, my problem is once it's on, I can figure it out, but I can never figure out how to make it work, so I just look out the window. I don't know how it works either. It's over there. Yeah, they're never easy to use, are they? Ever. In and out of this thing, super easy. Um, so this is where it starts to get wild, huh? We'll go over to that on side. On the back side. Right away, it's obvious to see trailing arms, right? Trailing arms. So what do you end up doing back here? So basically it's uh, triangulated as well with the trailing arms. It's got the same shock package as the front, all ADS, ADS bumps, um, TMR, uh, sway bar, 35 spline. Um, I don't think people really realize how important it is to have a 35 spline sway bar and not the smaller bars on something like this. If you really want to rip in the desert. So what, what do you got going back here? So rear radiator um, definitely keeps it cool. It does its, definitely does its job. Um, chase light up there. It's got the rugged radios antenna that you see going on. Fire extinguishers, uh, which is super important. If you, if you see this, this is remnants of our burn. I've had some fires on some of these episodes. Like that. Fire, 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 fire. Let's go. Good puddles, Where's the battery? Oh, that oh, I can only imagine. I would have loved yeah. to put you out with a fire extinguisher. And uh, no, the fire extinguishers did not work. 
I assume that you being in the business you are, that your extinguishers are probably good. Uh, that's why they're turned in, so you can't see them. And what the style gauges. of extinguisher do you use? Yes. That style? <laughs> yes. Okay, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I'm with that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm not, I'm not a fan of electric fans, but in the rear, the only thing you can do is electric fans. Well, especially since you, there's a windshield and a rear window, you don't have that, the air So do you through. suck out or do you blow in suck with out. the fans? So you mm -hmm. suck out. Okay. Yep. All right. And then a couple action packers. Every uh, CJ has got to have a high lift, huh? Oh, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, I love all your oil containment right there. All latched in that's obviously not for you that's the other people that break down Absolutely. and run out of oil and yep. when they roll over and stuff you want to help other people so you bring parts for them um what do you got back here i see there's latches and a hind pivot and then a storage area back here so so it's not tell me what you got going oh it's even got little uh shocks on it right so it'll flip up okay so a little water dripping out so this yeah. is where your storage is that's storage and the 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 uh Tailgate still goes down, huh? Still works. Okay. So, still a scrambler. Still a truck still bed, a still plenty of storage, more than a CJ. You have a spare tire mounted on this thing. And I can't believe these struts hold it up. Yeah. That's yeah, crazy. Absolutely. Where'd you get these struts? Do you get them on the interwebs? On uh, the interwebs. Like Amazon or yeah. something? Uh, I don't remember. It's been a while. But it's probably yeah. a Mercedes part. Like, I'm sure it is. So, where's the fuel cell in this thing? So, the fuel cell is all right here. Okay, so just in so, front of the axle. Yep. How many gallons you got 32. in there? Thirty-two. Thirty-two gallons. So you can cover some, some space in the desert. Yep. yep. Or the rocks or whatever. <clears throat> Back underneath here, uh, fourteen bolt, I guess. Fourteen bolt, two thousand newer GM. Oh yeah. Factory Fact disc brake. Factory disc brake. I notice you got our diff cover. Um, see the transfer case up in there. Looks like side exit exhaust, huh? Yep. I like that. Yep. And registered in Nevada, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, the great state of Nevada. Easy to register your CJ. We definitely need to get this thing outside the shop and take a look at it, but you know, I come into this shop and you can't help but look at everything else, right? So sure. you built this shop not too long ago, right? Uh, it's, it's a couple years. A couple years ago. Mm -hmm. So this is every guy's dream, you know? It's definitely my dream, it played out. Yeah, you should see my shop up at the North Pole. Just a bunch of bullshit kids toys, and <laughs> nothing cool, you know? That's all these are, just grown-up kids. <laughs> so real quickly, tell us about this one. So this is a build that I did for a friend of mine approximately six, seven years ago. It started life as a throttle down customs frame tubes bolted together, and basically that's how it showed up. That's how the build started. It wasn't even full frame. They were just Correct. both touching yep. each other. I yep. remember when that happened, you came to us. We talked a little bit. Um, we ended up selling you lots of builder's parts, tabs, heim joints, link yep. mounts. Yep. Um, you know, did some, some uh, axle work, I think, for you. But uh, this one took a while, too. I think you worked on this a couple of years in the garage. A couple of years, right? yeah. Next down the list, and this is like rewind all the way to the beginning, right? And this is OG, original build back in the early 90s. So what year is this? This is a 1980. 1980 CJ7. CJ7. Seven. Um, and then you come on to this. Now you got a, a 392 you're putting together for a buddy. Yeah. And... Uh, to go all the way down the road and then end up with, you know, basically a 2022, 23, 40 inch tires, 470 horsepower. It's like what we all wanted when we were building those CJs right. is all right here. Right. And drive it every day. Every day. So you guys just got done putting this thing on the ground today. So it really hasn't even driven yet, right? Yeah, we've, I think it's got maybe 200 miles on it. Um, 50 of them are from me, just kind of bouncing around in the desert before we built it and after we built it. And uh, just waiting on a few little parts to finish it up and send it off to its owner. So, you know, we can't uh, not talk about the elephant in the room over here making noise, right? right? Uh, there he is. Uh, this is your typical KOH prep um, a month before the race. Maybe two months. Yeah. Jaron yeah. Gunter. And uh, this is his yard sale right here. He's going to put all the stickers on how much he's selling them for here in about 30 minutes and put a sign out on the freeway. Great. You know? Um, but this is the guts of the Ultra 4 car, right? It's, uh, it's pretty impressive to see one of these cars torn down. So, I mean, the real deal is this beer is almost gone. And uh, even though I just happened on your place here, I do have an appointment in town. Uh, so I'm wondering, you wouldn't mind if I borrow one of your vehicles? Take it. Like, like maybe this thing? What's yours is mine. Yeah, I, I, what I'll do is uh, I'll bring it back after my appointment. 
you know. Yeah. But I, it's it's soon, so I got to get booking. Do your thing. Minutes later. I'm gonna need a little more speed. I think we're gonna have to go in the buggy. This thing's just too slow. Well, come on. Yeah.